Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and today we're going to take a sonic deep dive of the amazing Mini Freak by Arturia. This is a hybrid synthesizer in that it has two digital oscillators that then get fed into a true analog filter. And there's one analog filter for each voices, and it has six voices of polyphony. And uh, it also has three really great digital effects, as well as a sequencer, an arpeggiator, uh, two envelopes, two LFOs. You've got uh, lots of different ways to modulate the arpeggiation and the sequences to do some very cool things. Uh, just an all around amazing box. But today, I just want to do a deep dive sonically. So that means I'm going to show you each of the engines, each of the different possibilities of where the sound can go for those engines. And, uh, and then I might play a little bit for each type of engines. What I'm not going to do is do a walking manual through this whole thing. If you kind of want to see a lot of the other fiddly bits on this, uh, go look at my Microfreak uh, video and I actually go through how to do the assignments on the matrix and things like that. Uh, but for today it's just all about the sound and what an incredible sound this has. And I should say when you buy the Mini Freak, you also get the Mini Freak V, the virtual version of this that can run standalone or in your DAW. And and you can change the parameters of the software with the hardware knobs. It's a really great combination. And people who are really picky about those things in certain forums have said that they're very pleased with how close the virtual version is versus this. So everything I say about this, you can just assume is in the Microfreak V as well. So now we're going to talk about the oscillator section. And it's laid out very well. All of the modes are tweaked in the same way. And you use these very bright orange knobs here. And you have a type, you have wave, timbre, and shape. And on some of the models, it's not exactly what the parameter is, but it gives you a pretty good idea. And the more important thing is that you can hear it. As you turn the knob, you can very clearly hear what's going on. And often there's a little graphic to show you what's going on as well. All right, so now we're going to start on the first knob that says wave. In this particular mode, basic waves, that is the morph knob. And what it's doing, it's morphing from a square wave to a sawtooth wave to a double sawtooth wave that's an octave up, but we're morphing between those shapes like this. It's very important to understand that any sound that you like because I'm turning the knob can be achieved with the modulation matrix, either having an LFO move that knob, or your slider move that knob, or aftertouch move that knob, or velocity move it, whatever. Just as you hear something go, oh, I like the way that moves, just remember that there are plenty of ways on this to move it exactly that amount and exactly that depth. So the next knob is timbre, but what it's really doing on this particular model is called sim. And when we're down into square wave, it's doing square wave pulse width, which means, of course, if you put an LFO to it, you can get pulse width modulation. If you are in saw, now all of a sudden it's changing phasing of the two saws. And it's subtle, but it's a nice effect. And the final knob, it's adding a sub-oscillator, an octave down, that's a sine wave. And it just gives a nice fat bottom to whatever wave shape you picked. The next model is called Super Wave, and basically what they're doing is digitally recreating what it would be like to have multiple oscillators stacked together, and then you have the ability to detune and change the volume of that. You can also pick your wave shape. So unlike the original Roland Super Saw, the Super Wave lets you pick from other wave shapes as well. So we'll start with that. Triangle. Square. And Saw. And then when I turn the next knob, timbre, we're going to start detuning those virtual stacked waves. And it can go all the way to ridiculous. So 
but we can really push it by turning the third knob, which is volume, and so we're bringing the volume of all those extra stacked waves on top. Now when I turn to detuning, it's much more dramatic. And with some different waves, that was saw, now we'll do square. And I don't know what you're hearing at home, but here that just sounds really big and fat and beautiful. The next mode is the harmonic oscillator called Harmo here. And basically it's additive synthesis. The first knob is content and it lets you choose the harmonic relationships. It's easier to hear than to explain it. The next knob is sculpting and it allows you to move the basic wave shape from a sine wave to a triangle along with all the harmonics that you've generated with the first knob. And then the final knob is a chorus. So we'll play with those now. So now as I move the sculpting knob, listen to how the harmonics change as I sweep from sine wave to triangle. And the last one is chorus, and it adds a nice chorus. The next mode is the Carplus Strong, and this oscillator is one of the earliest physical modeling oscillators designed. Basically, they're taking white noise and running it into a resonant filter and doing these tricks that allow you to get plucks and bowed sounds. And your three knobs here are set up to do exactly that. So the first knob is bow, and as I move the knob, you can kind of hear some of the qualities of bowing. And the next is position, and it has to do with if you were modeling, say, a drum head, where on the drum are you hitting? You kind of already know that you get different tones out of that. Or if you're plucking in a different position on the strings, you get different timbres. And it's the same thing, so I'm going to just move that now. And each one of those positions have a very different quality. And then the last one is decay, and that's how quickly it fades away. The next one is a wave shaper that does both wave shaping and wave folding, very West Coast techniques. And the first knob does your wave shaping. Next knob does wave folding. And then the third knob does the asymmetry. So you're taking a basic shape and all of a sudden bending it into a new shape. And by showing you all three knobs moving, you're seeing all of the different possible timbres you can get out of this. And we haven't even gone to the filter yet. <laughs> 
The next model is two operator FM. Basically what they're doing is using that kind of FM that was famous in the DX7 days. And you take a sine wave and you modulate another sine wave at audible speeds. And the frequency between the two are at a chosen ratio. And that creates a certain set of harmonics. You did your electric pianos and lots of pads and leads and basses. And so the three knobs here do that. You have ratio. amount which determines how much that first oscillator drives the second oscillator. And remember, everything you're hearing as I'm turning knobs can be driven with envelopes or LFOs or after touch velocity, things like that, or the ribbons. Last one is feedback, and that's where you take the whole system and you take some of the output and feed it back into the top, and that generates even more harmonics, usually much higher. is a formant filter and this is a technique using two different filters each with certain frequencies and you set them a certain distance apart and it kind of creates vowel like timbres <laughs> This next one's a riot. It's called speech. It's basically the type of talking that you found in the old speak and spell by Texas Instruments. You can choose your words. You can modulate through words. Uh, you can change the timbre of the words like this. Frequency. 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 Voltage. Control. Control. One. The next mode is modal, and this is a method of getting percussive timbres, and the three knobs are there to change the physical properties of that. The next is noise, and that's just basically taking very fast random oscillation, and you can have control over various parameters of the noise. <laughs> And then the last knob is mixing an oscillator in with the noise. The next mode is bass. And it's created by taking two waves, a sine wave and a cosine wave, and it's a certain amount out of phase, and now you're controlling parameters of that to give you different bass types, and we're also mixing noise in with that as well.
The next mode is Saw X, and we're basically taking a standard saw wave, but then we're modulating its phase with white noise, which is a very chaotic thing. And we're controlling the depth of the noise, uh, some of the harmonics, as well as adding a chorus effect. This next one is called Harm. It's similar to the Harmo model uh, in that they're both playing with the harmonics, uh, but this one does it a little differently. It's spreading the harmonics. And then the third knob is adding noise. The next mode is Audio In, and that works on Oscillator 1 and allows you to bring audio into the Audio In jack. I have a little Korg Monotron here. Uh, that's a single oscillator analog synthesizer. And the thing about Audio In that you have to remember is that even though you're feeding audio in, it's not going to come out of the output unless you have a gate and else the key is down because otherwise everything's shut down. That can be cool because you can then do rhythms with one hand and notes with the other. But if you don't want to do that, you just hit a whole button, hit a note, and now it is always open. And the cool thing is, once it's in here, you can filter it. You can run it through effects. And if that weren't enough, you can also, from the orange knobs, do fold and decimator and noise. So the next one for oscillator 2 is FM ring modulation. And we've already done an FM where one of the oscillators has both sine waves and we're doing frequency modulation one against the other. But this one is different in that we're doing both frequency modulation and ring modulation of oscillator 1 with the tools that we have here in oscillator 2 and it just makes big fat angry sounds. The next mode is multi, and what this does is put a multi-mode filter in place of oscillator 2, and what it does is filters oscillator 1. So not only do you have your regular analog filter, but now you would have a digital filter that can have 14 different types of filtering. And so what I'm going to do now is feed oscillator 1 into that and sweep some of the parameters.
This next mode is a surgeon filter. Basically, it's a very, very narrow filter that you can use to either cut something very narrow, like a surgeon, you just want to cut out a small piece of something. Or uh, in the case of a high pass filter, you're only letting a very narrow sliver through. So here it is in high pass mode. And now I can widen the spread a little bit. Or make it very, very tight. Here it is with a notch filter, so now I'm cutting instead of letting through. And you can make some really good phasey effects as well. The next is a comb filter. That's a kind of filtering that you get like this, that you often get if you have two of the same signal out of phase. But here they let you play with the cutoff of the filter and the gain and the damping of the high frequencies. This next one is called a phase filter. Basically, we're not cutting or boosting anything, we're just changing the phase of various frequencies. And it could do pretty much any phase sound you've ever heard in a guitar pedal and so much more. And then we have destroy. It basically takes whatever oscillator one is doing and it folds, decimates, and bit crushes it. And the last mode for oscillator two is chords mode, which basically lets you choose from a long list of chords. And not only do you play the chords across the keyboard, but now you can use one of the knobs to invert which notes are on top of which notes, and you can change the waveform of those notes as well. So here's an octave. Fifth. And now listen what happens as I change the inversion of the octave. And the same thing on fifths now. And now I'm just going to run through a bunch of chords. So that was a sonic deep dive into all of the many engines that are featured in the Mini Freak and the Mini Freak VST. And if you want to see more about all the other stuff, watch my Micro Freak video because a lot of that is very similar. And if you want to just hear a lot of performances on this thing, I have a no talking video as well. We'll put a link into the bottom. If you have any further questions about the Micro Freak, the Mini Freak, or the Mini Freak V, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.
Thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or go to Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.